Hi everyone, this is Tristan from craftingworlds.com. Today we're going to show you how to make your own hedge maze. Any size you want, any dimensions, it's up to you. The first thing you're going to want to do is make an outline. Without this outline, you don't really have a premise for where you're going to build the maze. This also lets you pre-plan, you know, how you're going to terraform around it or in it to make it fit your land. And the idea here is that any size will work. You don't have to follow this to, you know, a T. You can make any size maze just with these guidelines to fit your island. So as you can see here, I had already made one before the hedges came out out of stone. So we're just cleaning that up real quick. Now, you also want to pick a tile that you want for to fill in the maze. Um, you can test this out by putting down little swatches and then putting some of the hedges down. I like the one on the right, the lighter color, so I went with that. And then you have to go ahead and fill in the outline that you already did. And then eventually you're going to have to fill in the entire thing. Now the reason you want to fill in the entire thing is that if someone looks at their map, if you've only done the pathways of the maze, they can easily plot their course to the end. If you fill the whole thing in, it just shows up as a a uh, large area filled in on the map so they can't cheat their way through. So just go ahead and fill it in. It will take a little bit of time. As you can see, this is sped up. Oh, and always talk to your neighbors. Otherwise, you're a soulless Animal Crossing player. Um, and then you can adjust as you go. See, I even expanded it a little further. And then you start placing your hedges. Now you're going to need about, I don't know, a couple hundred of these. So I would make Depending on the size, if, you, if you're making something in the size that I've made here, I had about mm, 180 hedges. And you just want to fill it in every row. You want to go around the outsides, and then you want to fill in the insides every row like this so that there's little walkways. Once you fill everything in, you can start to go through it and kind of knock pieces out, knock pieces in. And eventually what you're going to see is you're going to start seeing patterns and places where you can trick people. And once again, you have to talk to your neighbors, otherwise you're a soulless Animal Crossing player. And once you start knocking these little pieces out and putting them in, it starts to take shape. But if you don't do that in the beginning, it becomes harder to just create it, you know, unless you're going to draw it beforehand, that's also a good idea. But if you want to just do it in game, you just make those lines, you fill it in, and then you just knock it out and add here and there uh, until you have a pattern that you're happy with. And this helps you plot the tricks in the course, you know, uh, flips and, and things to trick the players so that they, th they think they're going to the right way, but they're not. Um, and it just gives you a better idea of, you know, exactly how your maze is going to end up. So it's, it, it's, a, it's a lot of creativity and you just, you just get to have a lot of fun with it. So as you can see, I'm really just playing around, seeing, you know, how easy is it, you know, going through the paths as I create them. Is this too easy? Is this like a straight shot? Do I want it to be more difficult? Do I want there to be like a loop? Do I want to trick someone? Do I want there to be a dead end? Um, and this is kind of how I did that. Do I want there to be a multiple, you know, forking area? Um, and so that's that's basically how I designed this. And all that took was building it in the beginning. Now, the other thing is that you want to take out pieces of the hedge here and there, because as you can see from this overhead view, it's very easy to see where you're going, right? And if you have too much visibility, the maze is just too easy. So what you do is you knock out these little swatches, you put in some dirt patches, and then you plant trees. By planting these trees, what happens is it blocks the view, whether you're in the lower normal view or you're in this overhead view, and it makes it harder to see to the end of the maze. So people have to actually go through the different paths to figure it out versus just being able to look and being like, ah, I found it. So it takes, it takes a little bit of the uh, pre-planning out for people and it gives it a little bit more fun and, and you know, it, it makes it last longer and it makes it more fun for the people that are doing it. So just fill it in with normal trees. And as you can see, it's already harder to see. So you can't just look at it and know, OK, I have to go this way. You know, we kind of hid the the ins and the outs and the entryways. So make sure when you use the trees that you're hiding the exits and the entrances and the twists and the turns so that they really can't get a full grasp on it. Then if you want to be, you know, a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> or if you want to add a little bit of uh, intrigue to it and make it so the maze takes a little longer, you can dig holes. The little one hole is jumpable. So I like to put them at the entrances so that people kind of have to think. They're like, oh, do I want to go this way? Do I not want to go this way? 
And I hide some of them behind trees as well because I feel as though if they can't see them and they feel like it's a dead end, they turn around and then it ends up that they should have gone that way in the first place. Your ultimate goal is that you want to trick people into thinking that they've gone the right way. You want to slow them down a little bit so they can't just speed run it. And this is what it'll look like when they're going through it. See that first one, it slowed you down right off the bat. And so it kind of messes with your mind. Do I want to jump the third one or do I want to go this way? And then I added lights to kind of give it some ambiance, those little floor lights. And the trees, as you can see, are kind of hiding the exits and entrances. So this was a dead end, but you couldn't see that very well. So you kind of had to try. And then I got stuck there myself on one of the little, um, you know, little holes. And it's like, oh, shoot. So somebody might turn around in those. And then see if you got this top angle, the trees help to hide it even more. And those lights, they just add a nice ambience to it. Um, the whole idea for me for this was I wanted something outside of my museum that would be, you know, outside of a normal museum which is a hedge maze, something that you often see outside of museums. So getting to the museum, you can either walk on the path on the left there, or you can go through this hedge maze. And so I also put some dinosaur statues and stuff, you know, on the outskirts. And there you go. Maze complete. So I hope this was helpful. If you liked it, please subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And I'd be happy to answer them for you. And I hope that you can add a hedge maze to your town in Animal Crossings as well. I will see you all in the next video.